Hello everybody, this is September and I'm checking in from the Hanwer server this morning. And in this video, what we're going to talk about is the new ancestral level coin purses and the crates to see how good or bad they just might be. First, just like all my other videos, I spent one hour farming. You're not going to see all that here. And this was during a non-war zone time. It is important to note that because in the war zone, the drop rates are usually about 50% higher. Um, so that's important to note. However, right now, Tryon has the three times drop event. And we'll talk more on how that's actually going to affect the, these numbers here in just a minute. Also, to be consistent along with the other videos that I've done, and the fact that I have little to no desire to upgrade any of my armor or weapons, I have played the same class with the same gear score as I did in the videos for both the Nobles and the Jester Crates, and as well as I do uh, Twitch streams just like this. So um, for those who've never watched any, any of my Twitch Crate Farm streams or any of my other YouTube videos on the Crate Farming, my class is Revenant with a gear score of about 6.3k. The best item I own is an epic tier 6 obsidian scepter, and everything else on my character is either a tier 5 divine, um, with the exception of just a couple divine ionads. Okay, before we go into opening up this stuff, uh, let me talk about the three time loot event and how I feel like it has affected any of the drop rates and what you may be seeing in the future. It is really a matter of getting coin purses or crates that we are concerned with. Though these mobs, they also drop the Cursed Armor Fragments and the Aurorian Metallic Crates. Um, let us just, for the sake of this video, talk about the coin purses and the crates. In other zones like Diamond Shores or Carcassi Ridgelands, uh, when it goes to war, most people kind of figured out that at some point you're using too many loot buffs. When you start seeing the mobs drop a crate or coin purse pretty much every kill, um, any other buff you put on is probably going to be wasted. Once, Because the way it works is when the mobs drop either the coin purse or the crate, they, the, they're never going to drop both. They're going to drop either or. So if you're getting one every kill, you've pretty much got the highest rate. Now, some, some will argue, and they're probably right, that the drop rate, if you increase it higher, you may get uh, more items like the weapon and armor drops, the metallic crates, or like this zone has, the cursed armor scraps. But again, we're not focusing on that here in this video. What actually happened in this video is the mobs dropped either the coin purse or the crate approximately 85% of the time. I, I did a whole hour, and it would have been impossible for me to go through the loot logs and count everything but it's about an 85 percent drop rate so that is close to max so that is not actually as good as i've seen in other zones like carcassi and diamond shores where uh it's in war zone and you use two or three loot buffs um you can get up to like 95 percent drop rate of either the coin purse or the crate so either this three times event didn't help much or the innate drop rate in this area is very low. Either way, I feel like when this event ends, similar drop rates could be achieved by farming this zone while it's in war and maybe with two to three of the 10% loot buffs. Okay, so after one hour of farming out here, I received 271 coin purses and 64 of the ancestral crates again this was a non-war zone when i did this farming and i used absolutely no loot buffs uh just had the three times event running um, that is going to end soon here um, i also received 11 of the cursed armor scraps three aurorian metallic crates and some of the missile miscellaneous lunastone materials Okay, first thing I want to do here is take a look at the coin purses to see where they fall in the silver to labor ratio. Now, each one of these has a base labor cost of 35 labor. And in one hour, the fact that I got 271 of them means it would take me over 
9,000 labor to open just these coin purses, which I need to point out is pro maybe possibly a good thing. I mean, this could be the resolution of one of the main complaints that people have been saying about larceny ever since they changed to this crate or coin purse system. Um, considering the fact that uh, the biggest complaint was it takes too long, too many hours, I have to spend half a day farming just to burn my labor, screw it, larceny's dead, although that's never been true. But when we consider these coin purses alone would take over three days worth of labor, you know, about 2,800 labor per day, you know, this could bring people back to farming these coin purses. Okay, so let's go ahead and open 10 of these up and now uh, let's run the numbers. And free talk opening. All right, we're, I'm going to break out the spreadsheet here and we're going to take a look at the numbers here on just the ancestral coin purses. Um, so here's a quick spreadsheet. Uh, this is for the 10 coin purses I opened, uh, starting at, at the top here, 1.2777 gold, and all the way down to the number 10 one, which was 1.3302 gold. The base labor that you're, uh, the base labor cost, if you're new to larceny or if you've just never leveled it up, would be 35 labor per coin purse, giving you a total for these 10 of 350 labor. If you're a maxed proficiency like myself, uh, you'd only be spending 210 labor. So a total of 10, 10 coin purses gave us just about 14 gold, 13.9729, so pretty close to 14 gold. Which if you divide the gold earned by the labor spent, the, uh, the total or the average silver to labor ratio for somebody that has no larceny skill and no labor reduction, would be about four silver per labor point, while somebody that is maxed out in larceny would be getting about 6.6 .6 silver per labor point. And I want to say this is pretty consistent with the other top tier uh, purses like the queens and the princes. Uh, though I know when you open these up and you start seeing uh, one and a half gold coming out per click, it feels a whole lot better. Next, we're going to go ahead and open up these ancestral crates. Um, again, I have 64 of them. The base labor cost is 80, and I think with the labor I have here, I should be able to open these all up, and then uh, we'll go ahead and bring up the spreadsheet again and take a look at the numbers and the drops. Opening crate. Okay, so there we go. That was 64 ancestral crates. Got tons of trees and braziers uh, to the point where um, you're probably going to be selling those for gen general vendor value. Uh, so let's go ahead and pull up the spreadsheet and see how we did. So we got a total of 455 trees, 202 braziers, 96 lunarite, 41 glowing prisms, and 44 or 45 mysterious garden powders. The total gold that we're going to be using based on the average values on my server, Hanor Legacy, 726.8 gold. The silver to labor ratios I've got over here on the side tables here. It shows that if you had no larceny labor reduction, you would be getting about 14 silver per labor point. And while somebody like myself can enjoy a return of about 23 silver per labor point. It was also interesting to note, even a person at max larceny proficiency, based off of just what I did here, could actually spend the entire patron's day worth of labor just in these loot crates in just one hour. So that was kind of cool. Another thing that I was interested in to see is the average garden powder drop rate per crate which came out to 0.7 or 70 percent of the crates on average had a mysterious garden powder which is actually much better than the other crate types uh, which is around 15 percent the big problem is the labor to open these is more than 10 times that of the lower crates like the princes so 
I need to point out that this is an average with some of these crates not yielding any mysterious garden cotters, while other the others crates that I opened would have four of them. So that's about seven out of ten is going to, on average, have a mysterious garden powder. Uh, so with that, uh, the value of everything in these crates is going to, the value of everything in these crates is actually went down with the patch, uh, which means these are going to be some of the lowest numbers I've ever reported. But to be fair, when I did the other crate values, the values of the Mysterious Garden Powder, which is the primary thing people were after, was more than double the current auction house value. Um, so I would like to say that these are still worth doing if you're comfortable in this zone and you're interested in dumping your daily labor allowance in less than an hour. Okay, to summarize everything, the coin purses they aren't very exciting, again, unless you just want to do an hour of farming and then you'll have your labor pool spent for the next three or four days. The crates are actually a decent trade between the time to acquire and the silver to labor ratio. Again, you can use a full day's labor in an hour or less. Finally, when you are trying to consider if this place is right for you. Note that I didn't talk about some things like the coin drops directly from the mobs, anywhere from 50 copper up to over a silver, depending on the mob. I can tell you that in the one hour I spent, I didn't really kill the big mobs that take forever to kill. I had to kill a few of them, but I did make about 20 gold, just straight up gold from the mobs I killed. Additionally, I did find three Aurorian metallic crates, which those are anywhere from 20 to 28 gold, depending on when you sell them on my server. And then also the cursed armor scraps, which right now are quite valuable since it's going to take a person doing as well as I did about 18 hours of farming to get the 200 required scraps. So you can combine it and then you make the cursed armor fragment on legacy so far. Only two of the, the Cursed Armor Fragments have actually been sold. One was at 8,000 gold, the other at 5, 000, or 15,000 15, gold. Uh, so if, if you say the design is worth about 12,000 gold, that would give you an average of 60 gold per scrap, which is not bad. It's very good right now. Um, but we know the price is actually going to come down as people start getting their 200 pieces put together. Well, I think that is going to be it for me today. I feel like this was a complete, accurate look at the ancestral mobs, the coin purses, and the crates. I hope you found this video both helpful and informative. If you would like to support my efforts, you can subscribe to me here on YouTube. You can like the video as well. Follow me on Twitch or Twitter, and... You can also join me on Patreon. All those links will be in the video description down below. Remember, every Friday I stream from Twitch, in which we talk about the current news, and we also sometimes take a look at what I'm doing currently to make gold. Until next time, September Sane, be well.